Hello, and welcome to the Research Roundup. Today, I'm going to be chatting with Dr. Samantha Walker, who's the Head of Research and Innovation for Asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation. Today, Dr. Samantha and I will be discussing how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected research into asthma and other lung conditions. And amongst other things, we'll also be chatting about how our researchers have been fighting COVID-19. I really hope that you enjoy today's discussion and if so, please do like our videos, subscribe to our channel and add your comments below. Hello Sam. Hi there. Today I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to go through a few questions with you about uh, how research for both Asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation has been affected during the pandemic during 2020. Um, and hopefully we can we can look ahead to see what the what the future looks like. Yes, absolutely. Excellent, thank you. Um, so obviously we've we've heard in the media that due to COVID nineteen research into conditions like cancer has been set back by the pandemic. Um, how has the current respiratory research been affected by COVID nineteen and things like working from home or social distancing? Um. What we've mainly heard from people is that the people doing science in laboratories, the laboratories have shut. So a lot of the studies have been just stopped because the studies couldn't happen because you couldn't have people traveling in and out of labs. Um, and there's been a huge pivot, understandably, into vaccine research. So a lot of people who've got those skills have been moved off project into vaccine research, which is obviously as it should be. We've seen a lot of people who are also doctors and nurses who do research who've then stopped because they've been pulled into the clinical front line, which again is as it should be, but it just means that the, the big projects that they had been responsible for have stopped. Um, and I think the other thing is that trials which involve people coming into hospital or a, or a clinic for tests have also um, not had the capacity to be able to do those. And I think one of the interesting things is that because respiratory diseases, the tests you use, to measure respiratory diseases like lung function involve you blowing into machinery and of course that has a huge worry about transmitting um, viruses through blowing into machines so all that stopped. On the plus side we've seen a lot of digital innovation about how we diagnose and monitor lung diseases through digital technologies which is just amazing and may well last long after this pandemic. And that, that kind of digital innovation as I understand it is, is an area that Asthma UK have certainly been involved in, in the past, is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Asthma UK um, a couple of years ago did a specific grant round where we offered money to innovators who were interested in getting money to develop new diagnostic tests in asthma using really new cutting edge technologies. And we've um, funded some really interesting work with, with either kit or apps or devices that really start to be able to have enable people to monitor their symptoms in their own home rather than having to go to a clinic. So that makes that whole thing to do with the pandemic actually much easier if you can get people to do it at home. We will start to see emerging technologies that allow you to measure hear breath sounds, which people with asthma particularly, but also people with other lung diseases, you can hear their lungs not behaving right by the fact they're wheezy or their chest is making a different sound. And I think technologies are gonna start being developed that allow all that to be developed through um, sticking plasters or patches or things like that. And I think that whole area of making it so much easier and accurate to measure people's chest symptoms at home is going to potentially transform the way we, we diagnose and monitor lung diseases. The things with, with, with uh, diseases like asthma and COPD is that they tend to fluctuate and they get better and they get worse. And if you only ever see somebody for an appointment once a year, you don't really remember what your symptoms have been like the previous year. But if you've got technologies through watches or Fitbits or patches that enable you to measure that, you can be much more accurate, even yourself, about understanding how bad your symptoms are and what you need to do about them. And you can report those to your doctor through your phone. Yeah. So, you know, really interesting and, and exciting to think about the future, I think. Fantastic. Thank you, Sam. Um, I think that leads us on quite nicely to our, our next question, um, which is kind of thinking about whether COVID-19 has had a, had a positive impact. And I think from what you said, it, it clearly has from a, an innovation perspective. 
Um, so has, has the fact that COVID-19 is a condition affecting the lungs um, focused more attention on the, on the research work that we're involved in? Um, and can this be seen as a positive? Uh, yes, I think so in lots of ways. I think um, a positive is that this is a, a respiratory virus that has lots of effects on other parts of your body but comes in largely through your, through your lungs and that has really raised the profile of respiratory diseases um, in the world and, and, and you know, as you know has completely you know, decimated glo the global economy as well as many people's lives. Um, I think just thinking about how you might to see some silver linings using that to, to highlight the importance of respiratory conditions which let's not forget that about one in five people will have had a respiratory condition a lung condition at some point during their lifetime that really raises that up the agenda and we need to understand if you've got a lung disease or does that make you more likely to, to get the the virus or other viruses and or do you respond um more severely to them. So I think there's, there's some understanding that hopefully will come out of that that enables us to understand better how lung diseases respond to viruses and what that risk is. But I think we, you know, we've still got a long way to go. I think um, the 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 idea that the idea that people have of respiratory diseases is that they're not as important as some others. And I think this has shown that respiratory illnesses are incredibly important. Definitely, definitely. I think that's really, really interesting. Thank you so much. Um, just to say for anybody who's watching, if, if you do find today's video of interest and you're, you're passionate about research into asthma or, or other lung conditions, um, please add your comments below, give us a like and also subscribe to the channel. So our next question, Sam, is, uh, is a little bit about the, the researchers in, in particular. I know you, you touched upon it in, in, in our first question. As I understand it, some of our researchers have actually been involved in the fight against asthma, uh, sorry, in the fight against COVID-19. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about, uh, about what they've been, been doing? Yeah, as I say, right at the beginning of the pandemic, really quickly, the um, National Institute of Health Research, which is one of the biggest government funders, put out a lot of money to fund grants into, into COVID. Almost overnight, the respiratory research community pivoted from whatever else they were doing into doing work into, into new treatments for, for COVID-19. And I think that was just an amazingly quick response. What we found is a lot of our, um, a lot of our research community, a lot of human doctors and nurses, physios, all then got involved in that new types of research. So we've seen amazing leadership from some some of the respiratory um, my respiratory colleagues in 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 really coming up with innovative ways of doing research into this in a way more interesting to, to me personally anyway um, and partly in hindsight because we now have a vaccine is is this idea of long covid and, and what we do about that and what that actually is um, and uh, one, a few of our researchers are involved in, in big national projects to collect data from people who, are ha who suffer with long COVID and then look at those data and try and think, well, what does that mean? What is this, what is this long COVID? What, 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 what kind of disease is it? And how do we treat it? Because in my experience, talking to people who've got it, they've, they've nowhere to go, or at least they didn't have. No, their doctors were a bit dismissive. Well, you've just had a virus, what are you talking about? So our researchers, particularly um, it, along, that li along those lines, have been involved in, in collecting um, 10,000 patients who've, got, who've been hospitalized with COVID and studying what happens to them. And this is going to read out, give the results in the next six months or so, if, we, if they're just recruiting at the moment. But that will just be, they're going to x-ray them, take blood tests, take urine tests, ask them questionnaires, heart tests, all sorts of things. And then so we should, well, should have 10,000 people where you can look at all those data and say, OK, so how do we, what does this look like? What is it? Because it's a new disease, basically. Of course. So, so they've been doing that. And I think that's just been such an interest. That's such a brilliant contribution to the field. I'm really proud of, of the people that we've worked with over the years. Of course, of course. And I, and I, I, I guess as well, um, data is, is, is going to play a, a huge part in, in, in all of this. And I know I've, I've heard in the past about how I believe the organisation have been involved in kind of data sharing. Is that correct? Um, and, and I guess for something like this, with COVID-19, 
data, data is in integral. Absolutely, and you need to link that those data to enable you to study people over time. So this this study led by um, the University of Leicester is going to measure this ten thousand people, but that database will be linked to virtually every other UK database that's collecting data on COVID, so that you can do some very very fancy analyses, you know, of big data basically in a way that from a um, computing power perspective we couldn't have done 10 or 15 years ago but now we can and and there are the groups of researchers who are experts in data who can analyze it and the groups in the UK are connected with groups all over the world so it really is a kind of global effort that we're really delighted to be bringing the voices of patients in the UK who suffered with this and making sure their voices are heard amazing Thank you, Sam. I think that's really, really, really insightful. The next question relates to um, to Asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation join, joining forces, um, which for people watching, they, they, they may not be aware that in January 2020, the two organisations made the decision to to work together. Um, so I was wondering if you could um, if you could tell me a little bit about how Asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation joining forces has broadened the impact of the, of the research of both charities? I think we're able to be, as a result of the, the merger, we're able to be a much more united voice for people with lung conditions um, and a stronger voice. For charities to make themselves heard above the general hubbub is hard at the best of times. So actually for us to have become the voice of people with, with lung diseases in, in the UK is, is amazing and, and enables us to be much more joined up in our thinking in the work that we do on, on research and, and innovation, which obviously is really important, but also uh, keeping pressure on the NHS and, and things like, um, you know, campaigning to, to uh, reduce air pollution. So I think it, it, and hopefully as well, it allows us to save money on, on so-called kind of back office functions where we're spending less on doing everything in duplicate. So we're, we've got more money to spend on, on research and innovation that allows us to really do the research that, that is based on patient needs. So I think it, all in all, it, it's, it's a very logical step for the two organizations and just enables us to, to have more impact and, and a more powerful voice. Excellent, thank you. Um, so the next the next question is our is our final question, Sam. So obviously, thank you so much for your for your time again. Um, and for anybody watching, if they want to add their comments below, like the video, and subscribe to our channel, then please do. You'll be the first to hear about future videos from uh, from Asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation. The final question: As leaders in respiratory research, do you foresee involvement in future COVID nineteen research being a priority? alongside our research into asthma and lung health? Um, I think it's a, that's a very interesting question. And, and as you know, we've got a new uh, chief executive managing our merged organisation and, and we'll be thinking about our sort of strategic direction over the coming, coming months. My gut feel is that we as a charity won't be as involved in the, the type of research that develops new treatments because there is a lot of money and a huge amount of effort uh, going into that already with massive success. Big trials from universities around the UK and around the world are getting there in terms of vaccines and drugs like dexamethasone, which, which reduce um, deaths by about a third. So it doesn't seem logical for us to spend our limited funds on developing treatments. I think where we can add real value uh, is is in this long COVID space. You know, one of the most important side effects or to after effects of COVID that people get is breathlessness. Uh, breathlessness and fatigue are the two biggest problems that people get. So I think we're in a really good position to support research into how we best look after those people. I think what, we, what we're get, planning to do in the short term is carry on learning from these big studies that we're involved with because we're involved from a patient perspective bringing those insights back into the charity and then thinking, okay, so how do we use those insights to develop treatments, um, develop interventions or, or new ways of managing your symptoms? You know, if you've got breathlessness, could we develop something that helps people to get, start taking exercise really gradually to help people on that journey? So I think there's lots of opportunities for us to fund both, both 
you know, products and services, but also to really research what is needed and, and how we base that on patient need is going to be really interesting, I think. But we still need to, you know, we still know that asthma kills, uh, you know, 1,100 people a year, 80,000 hospital admissions, you know, million and a half people with COPD in the UK. There are still lots we don't know about how best to manage those conditions. So I think it's important that we don't take our eye off those particular balls as well as interstitial lung disease and bronchiectasis as well. So I think we, we need to look at the landscape and see where we can add most value. That's where I think we'll, we'll end up going. Thank you so much for your time and for, for answering the questions today. And for anyone watching, please do add your comments below, like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much again, Dr. Samantha Walker. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching the Research Roundup brought to you by Asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation. My guest today was Samantha Walker, the Head of Research and Innovation for Asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation. If you enjoyed today's video, please let us know by liking, subscribing to the channel, or by adding a comment below. Also, if you're able, please do consider making a small donation today. Your support will help us to continue defending the nation's lungs. Thank you and see you again soon.